symptomatology and testing, two cardinal questions. Symptomatology is that of upper respiratory infection in general, and we'll come down to specific aspects. That means anything to do with this area, which means uh, an itchy dry throat, a sore throat, a runny nose, and both of them together especially, accompanied by sneezing episodes, a fever, headache, body ache, loss of taste and smell, very rarely abdominal pain and diarrhea, or just not feeling well. So that's the constellation over there. <clears throat> so if that happens, there's two ways to look at it. One, I have allergies. My runny nose comes in this season, <clears throat> so I'm not too, uh, I'm not too comfortable, and this happens to me. So if it's a regular allergy, then you may be able to take an individual call that it's an allergy. I took a medication, went away in eight nine hours. This is not uh, symptoms of uh, a respiratory infection or COVID nineteen. But anything beyond that, anything beyond that which persists, especially if it is out of the way, it is persistent as I kept on saying. Secondly, and I have been in an ecosystem where I can get infected or anybody around me got infected or I had exposure. If you put this constellation together, you will know that, well, this is out of the ordinary. I need to figure out this is COVID-19 and then comes the question of testing. Peculiar to this wave has been seeing the fact that scratchy throat, itchy, scratchy, irritable throat, sore throat, going to painful throat seems to be quite typical. With that, people are getting sniffly nose, blocked nose, runny nose. So this constellation is quite typical. Add on the fevers, people go from low grade, fortunately most of uh, people have that, to high grade fever. And then the inevitable headache, body ache and uh, fatigue comes with that. But to repeat, scratchy throat, itchy throat, sore throat, painful throat, and the runny nose seem to be part of this particular variant. In terms of testing, testing so far is recommended as much as you can. So if you need to know for your own benefit and for the people around you, in the sense that am I going to infect an elderly person, a child, or my ecosystem, it's important to test. But testing has been a yo-yo. It, it goes from an early stage of, of, of the disease. When there are few people in the population, then you say test everybody and the three T's, test, track, and treat come up to now when it is so rampant that the ICMR, our August body has also said that keep the testing down. You don't need to test everybody. Asymptomatics don't test at all. Screening don't test at all. Young healthy people don't test at all. To cut a long story short, symptomatology is what we've gone through. Testing, if you have access to it, do test because knowledge is equal to ability to treat and ability to protect people around you. The good news is that this variant seems to be much milder than the older uh, second wave Delta variant. So most people are doing very well. Now, which test to do? It's either the rapid antigen. Rapid antigen comes positive usually if you are symptomatic. It's not bad at all. The average statistics go 50 to 70 percent. But if you're asymptomatic, I mean, I just want to test every third day, it's not more than 30 to 50 percent. So, positive rapid antigen ends the story. This is COVID. Go ahead and treat. You don't need to do a rapid PCR. A negative rapid antigen with a suspicion of respiratory infection, which may be COVID, still mandates an RT PCR. So, that is the way to go. In terms of access to tests, rapid antigens are available everywhere and currently highly unmonitored. You can go and buy it and do it yourself also if you have to. But the right way is to come into the system and take the right advice so that you are doing it under supervision of somebody who can help you with the results. Otherwise, you get into worry mode. So help you with the results, help you with what to do, analyze the risk factors and recommend right approaches to the next step after.